Many decades ago, fish camps could be spotted all along the Takini River. But for most First Nations people in the Yukon, fish camps are a memory of the past. All of our fish camps are empty. There's been nobody um, fishing for a number of years. See? He jumped right there. Brandy Mays is a lands operation manager for Kwanlin Dunn First Nation. Kwanlin Dunn is one of many First Nations in the Yukon working to protect and monitor Chinook salmon. A highly valued traditional food, Chinook stocks have been in decline for around a decade. Now, in place of fish camps, there's a new fixture along the river, sonar equipment. It's looking at a new way to connect with salmon and what do the salmon need from us? You know, they've, they've given their lives to us for thousands of years and now it's our turn to like help the salmon. Just across the river, land steward Cheyenne Bradley is using sonar software to count Chinook as they travel upstream to their spawning grounds. All right, so here's a salmon. Uh, this long line that I was talking about, this is the shadow that it casts. So far, an estimated 456 fish made it past the Takini sonar like this summer, over 200 more than last year. But that number is a far cry from 1,800 fish counted in 2018. We can count 400 and something here at the sonar, but at the end of the day, all that matters is if they made it up to their spawning grounds to spawn. Sonar information is vital. It can help the DFO and First Nations make decisions about salmon conservation, like asking their citizens not to fish. I know it's a really, really hard thing to ask, but I mean, it's in dire times right now and we kind of really need to, need to let the salmon go and spawn, so. If people aren't worried, there should be. James well, McDonald is the chair of the Yukon Salmon Subcommittee. He says this is the salmon. worst year on record for Chinook. As of August 24th, just over 12,000 Chinook passed a sonar near the Canadian and Alaskan border, down from 31,000 fish counted last year. You know, that's a, a biological tipping point, which means we're close to losing our salmon, uh, much closer than ever before. McDonald says it's not clear why numbers continue to decline, though things like climate change, bycatch, and competition for food may be to blame. I would imagine a combination of all these different factors that have taken place over the last, uh, last decade or so. While fish camps no longer dot the Dakini River, May says it's important First Nations stay hopeful that they may one day return. I know some people are, you know, it's, they're not, they're losing hope. And it's a small, a small number of salmon that are coming back, but we have, we have hope. We're optimistic. Sarah Connors, APTN National News, Whitehorse.